Uh, we're still on with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Many thanks for staying with us. Uh, we delve into your second conversation. Uh, let's look at the concerns with the governors and the, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit. However, reports are saying that governors and the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit may be set on a collision course over cash withdrawals and the use of security vote. Now, according to the information that's been gathered, the restriction on cash withdrawal has been put out from uh, on public account and will still be in enforced. That's uh, according to the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit. Now, some months back, am I interested to know that the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit had disclosed the government's plan to stop cash withdrawals from all public-run banks' accounts. This was later followed by an official directive banning transactions on all government accounts from March the 1st, 2023, with the NI NFIU uh, gearing for enforcement despite the introduction of the cash withdrawal limits in the country. State government withdrew a total of 701 billion naira cash that's above the 225 billion naira withdrawal by the federal government and 156 billion naira withdrawn by local government from 2015 to date. As a consequence, uh, any government official that withdraws even one naira cash from any public account from March the 1st will be investigated, prosecuted in collaboration with relevant agencies like the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Order Related Offences Commission, that's the ICPC. And uh, the uh, Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit also advised banks and government agencies to move into online payment as all transactions involving public money must be routed through the banks for accountability and transparency. I mean, the conversation is almost endless, but let's quickly introduce our guest this morning. He's a public policy analyst right here in Lagos, Bolaho Ulujide. Bolaho, it's good to have you join us once again. Thank you so much. Yeah, good morning. Nice to be on the program. Yes. So, um, what exactly could be, be the problems with the governors or, you know, public accounts in Nigeria when the option of transacting online is still very open? So what exactly are we dealing with now? Okay. Um, on one side is the fact that cash does not leave traces. So people who, who want to be able to do transactions without leaving traces are interested in cash. And that has implications for corruption and abuses all over the place. However, it's a very tricky situation we have found ourselves with this particular policy. And I'll tell you why. Number one is the reality that as at today, a lot of government revenues are still being collected in cash. So you go to... Uh, the courts, or you go to uh, certain government offices, or or markets, uh, or, or tolls, are still being collected in cash. The problem with that is that if you say I should not transact in cash, how about I hold some of those cash revenues? If you won't allow me to take it from the bank, you know, then I will brought, I will not bother to take them to the, the bank. I can make an arrangement like that. Number two is the readiness of the banking infrastructure to take on um, a huge additional volume of electronic transactions. What we have seen in the last three months does not show that the infrastructure is ready and will be readily available to take on these transactions as they come. So we also have an infrastructure problem with us to be the other part, yet again, is that some security-related transactions by, the, by their very nature are such that um, you want to hide certain things about them. <clears throat> so uh, there are certain payments that you don't want to leave traces. You don't want them to leave traces because of the security nature. However, if everything has to be done by electronic transfer uh, directly to the beneficiaries, those transactions will leave traces. And people will know the bankers, for example, will know who the beneficiaries of this money is at. So it's a very tricky area. Meanwhile, don't forget that Nigeria has been gray listed. 
by uh, the the uh, there is this international financial task force, uh, you know, and I learned that even the EU have done the same thing. So it means that we must necessarily do something about it. So having a meeting between the, the critical stakeholders, the governors who want to be able to spend cash, um, number two, the CBN, as well as EFCC, NFIU, the, all the stakeholders must sit down together to work out what can make this policy work. Otherwise, it will fail because of those issues that are listed. You can't even prosecute the governor anyway. So what are you going to do if it is the governor that, you know, did the cash withdrawal that you're talking about? Uh, what, what do you do? You can't prosecute him for civil liability nor for uh, 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 criminal liabilities. So the best you can do is to report them. There is an international portal on which they can be reported. And I'm sure that the governors will not want to be reported internationally. So we can put all this together and work out something that, that will work for all the stakeholders in this, uh, in this matter. No, but I'm, I'm taking a, a back, especially when, you know, the governors had meetings or, or meeting with, uh, you know, the Nigerian intelligence unit, financial intelligence unit, as well as, you know, other stakeholders agreeing to be, you know, to collaborate and, you know, just be impact be part of the entire committee and the process. And then uh, you'd also report that there might probably just be a, a clash. But of course, it's very obvious, uh, the point that you have raised, why, you know, the governors might be having issue complying with, just go ahead and, and, and you spend your money, but you don't have to uh, withdraw cash. You have to transact online. And that, uh, th those points that you have raised seem to, uh, make a lot of sense to all of this. But, you know, moving forward now, do you think that the body, that's the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, has the capacity, as it were, uh, you know, to ensure that this particular um, statement or policy is respected by the governors? If, if it agrees to work with other stakeholders, including the governors themselves, it is possible that we can significantly deal with the matter. Um, I am not so sure that we're going to get to a point where it will be zero cash. I am not sure about that. However, we can significantly agree on critical issues of transparency and accountability. The, the, the so-called so security vote has been a very big issue. It's a dark hole. Nobody knows exactly what goes on there. And the, the, the expenditure in that dark hole are done in cash, which leaves no traces. I think it is a call for more transparency and accountability on the part of the, of the governors. They need to come forth and be more transparent in this matter. But whatever concerns that they have, whatever genuine concerns they have, can be presented before the stakeholders so that the stakeholders will examine this, the genuineness of these issues and be able to find a way around it such that this policy will not fail. On the part of NFIU, uh, strictly by itself, it will not be able to execute this policy. It will fail. It needs to work with those other stakeholders. Especially when, you know, state governors make claims to the fact that they're not chief security officers, literally, because uh, the security architecture is controlled by the center. That's the federal government. And then, you know, they constantly say, oh, we're not in control of the security architecture. Then on the other hand, security votes are being allocated, you know. So what's the rationale behind all of this? And why is there so much interest, you know, in the security votes? The reason there is so much interest in security vote is that there is no accountability for it, as simple as that. So um, it's, a, it's an easy way to make money. It's an easy way to make payments that are not back, 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 backed up by vouchers. It's an easy way to make payment to unknown beneficiaries, who could be anybody. So uh, um, it's, it's, it's a very dark hole. Now, if, you, 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 if, if you're going to deal with a matter like, forget about what the governor said when they back us. Uh, the buck to the federal government. They do that not just in security. In the real sense, they are the chief security officer of their state. But when they need to pack that buck, they will pack it to the pass it to the president and say, "Oh, 
uh, I don't control the police. They've said the same thing about power. They've said the same thing about several other things that they don't control because the most of them are not ready to accept full responsibility that have been put on their laps. I agree that elements of the security issues are not uh, within their control. However, it raises a question. So why do you always appropriate this huge unaccounted, unaccounted for amount as security vote if you're saying that you are not uh, in charge of the security of your state? There are a lot of, there are levels of security and there is no doubt that some of the level of security in a particular state resides within the purview of the government and they can do something about it when they need to. And they will definitely need money. It's a matter of how accountable are they about what they spend in terms of security vote. There is no security vote in Nigeria's constitution. It doesn't exist. So, so then, um, do you think that, you know, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit is not, uh, you know, addressing the issues as it should be, rather than talking about uh, the limit of, uh, I mean, cash withdrawal limits, uh, should the attention not be on the funds that cannot be accounted for? Uh, it, it's all part of the policy. You see, it, as much as possible, you don't want people withdrawing cash, especially government. So it, it is not just about security. Every time that transactions or payment have to be done in cash, the reality is that the cash leaves no traces and it is the attraction. When something leaves no traces, it is open to abuses and corruption. So it has to go even beyond the issue of security code that is not being accounted into other dimensions of corruption that cash payment presents. So it goes beyond security code. And that's why NFIU is approaching it this, in this way. Something more encompassing, of course, with, that, with a focus on security code, because that is a chunk of where uh, these issues uh, reside. And like I said, NFIU by itself cannot swing this. It must work with the other state. Mm. No, but, but so, so moving forward now, uh, what do you think would be the implication if you know, the NFIU gets it right? And what would be the implication if we don't? Because already today is the, uh, you know, we're looking at the 4th day in April. So uh, we can't actually categorically say if these governors have actually made withdrawals, they have gone ahead to take cash, you know, from the account because the policy should have taken place, uh, been effective from the 1st of March. Okay. Um, if we get this right... The implication will be better transparency, financial transparency um, at, the, at the state levels by the governors. It will, 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 they will become more accountable for that security vote and other cash-related expenditures that they make because electronic platform will leave a trace and you can find out who is the beneficiary, how much was it paid, and all of that. But when those things are done in cash, you, 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 lose, you lose track of everything. So uh, the transparency and accountability will definitely improve if we get it right. If we are, it will also help the issue of Nigeria being grey listed by some international bodies for issues around uh, maybe money laundering, financing of terrorism, or lack of transparency around financial transactions, which is why we're being released. So if NFI you get this right, definitely that will improve as well. We might be removed from those uh, lists. If we don't get it right, we are likely to have some of our governors end up on those lists. Some of them might not be able to move around, and some of them will run into further trouble uh, with those international organizations, especially when it has to do with foreign uh, uh, trips or foreign uh, transactions. Mm. Well, uh, well, Aho, thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. It's been very insightful. Your thoughts this morning on the conversation. Thanks for having me. All right, then we have been speaking with Bolaho Olujide. He was a public policy analyst in Lagos. He, joins, he joined us this morning uh, to look at the, uh, the consents of the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit. 
right here and the fact that there might just be a clash with you know the governors as to uh, the limits on cash withdrawal and the fact that they also been advised to embrace electronic transactions i mean e-payment where traces can be left just like bolaho Ulu Olaji Day, who had already said, uh, that's the sign. Thank you so much for being part of the show. You can follow us on any of our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We'll join the newsroom at nine o'clock for the news brief. Many thanks for watching. I am Messia Bofo. Have a great morning.